I am a biologist, a really serious scientist, and I believe in magic. When we are watching a magician, the magic is when there is a surprising result without us understanding the details causing this result. Sometimes the magician is nature itself, such as when consciousness is formed in a brain from electric signals. Through all my career, there have been two ruling perceptions of reality. One is that of the ecologist, which relates everything to nature and cycles. The other is that of the engineer, which relates everything to production and efficiency. Despite being a biologist specialized in ecology, I have a lot of the engineer in me, so I tend to end up in the intersection between these two realities. For my masters, I joined a cross-disciplinary project, the traditional Western Norwegian farm as a cultural biological system, a study of farms operated as in the old days, before the Green Revolution. I had very nice fieldwork. This is a traditional mixed farming system where resources are harvested up from the fjord locally by fishing and down from the mountains through summer farming and grazing animals. It's a sustainable system because it's based on local cycles and resources and it also showed a high biological diversity. It was a synthesis of man and nature but very hard work for the farmer and quite a contrast to what modern real-world agriculture, engineered agriculture, looked like. Which is a simple linear system of input, machine, product, often in the form of monocultures. To keep up with the oil age, it had to be streamlined and automated and mechanized. You know all that stuff. For some years, I also almost became the engineer and established a mushroom cultivation facility. But running a production business is about focusing on the product and cutting costs and things like that. But I was an ecologist at heart after all. So instead of doing the necessary and urgent things, I rather spent my time finding new connections, how I could connect mushroom cultivation to greenhouses and so on. So the engineer, seeing all the connections, gave trouble for the efficient, narrow-minded engineer guy. And my business failed after some years. I went back to academia as a PhD student to study how to grow mushrooms from food waste. But doing a PhD is, again, focusing very hard on your narrow topic, publish your findings and forget about the rest. And was that me? No, I just had to look wider, the ecologist searching integration with other fields of interest. So I rather took initiatives towards cross-disciplinary projects about uh, ecosystems of waste and food, and made sketches and gave talks about this. When I drew this in 2008, it was purely a research topic. It received little interest from the real practical world of production and engineers, except as space research. So I read everything about closed ecological life support systems for Mars instead of writing papers about mushrooms. Even though this didn't give me a PhD at that time, nor a job in NASA, it did give me a job in a waste company. There, after a couple of years, I was given the chance to finally do an engineered system taking ecology seriously. Food to waste to food. And it was exactly that, without compromise. If you're insisting on growing plants from waste, you have to struggle. For example, in ordinary greenhouses, tomato plants are usually grown without soil, where nutrients are just added into the water. Simply substituting the nutrients with a soup of digested waste into the standard system, as a greenhouse engineer would do, didn't work very well. Despite the fact that the chemistry looked good, 
The plants simply didn't want to grow. But we started to experiment and made a lot of trial and error and finally we found out that you could not think just in terms of plants and nutrients. You have to bring in more wild, natural stuff. So we brought in earthworms. My colleague adapted them to eat pure digested waste. And they started loving it. He also found out you can add them directly to the pots. So instead of feeding plants nutrients, we fed earthworms digested waste. And then the plants started growing like magic. So the earthworms distribute and degrade nutrients, making channels for air and water, and they work the soil for free 24-7 like tractors. Actually, the magic is in the earthworm's poop, plant stimulating bacteria and hormones. So it seemed that the key to success was a more complete ecosystem, and we had plants, animals, bacteria, but we also wanted to explore more of the fungi, the mushrooms. They are, after all, the experts of eating waste. In the wild, fairy rings show how fungi can free nutrients for plants, shown here as a ring of a darker, more healthy grass. Could we take this fairy magic into the greenhouse to stimulate the plants? We succeeded to grow mushrooms and cucumbers together in the same container, but they ended up competing for the same nutrients. But then we grew them in sequence. First, we grew mushrooms in the digested waste. Then after picking all the mushrooms, we mixed this into the lettuce potting soil. And bingo, we had a significantly higher yield of lettuce. Nature's own cycles again proved efficient. But we have still lots to learn. There are also other species than Homo sapiens doing mushroom farming. These are grown by termites. They collect biomass from afar, take it into their mounds, where they magically control the microbiology in favor of the fungal mycelium, which they then feed to their larvae. And the fungus gets a chance to make mushrooms and spread their spores. I like to say I know how to grow mushrooms, but I'm just an apprentice compared to termites. So active transport of nutrients by animals like termites and worms is a characteristic of productive natural ecosystems. The animals in such systems are called the ecosystem engineers. Grazing domestic animals were our ecosystem engineers, but the logic of ecosystems was lost, such as taking the animal waste back to the field when engineering took over agriculture. Natural disturbed ecosystems can, to a large degree, fix themselves. Surprisingly often, it's just a matter of stepping back and let the natural processes then play out on their own. Or we can help by deliberately adding ecosystem engineers missing. This kind of principle for fixing ecosystems is called rewilding. Indoor vertical farming is now proposed as a big opportunity for future food production, and I think it is. But are we getting it right? The engineer in me says, yes, we can control temperature and light and all these things. But the ecologist in me says, are we in the process of doing exactly what Einstein said we should not do? Solve the problems by using the same kind of logic as we used when we created them. Where's the rest of the ecosystem? Where's the dirt and the bugs to recycle the nutrients? Where are the microbes that magically stimulate our immune system in the right way? Is this the very same thing? Are we just taking the engineered fields inside in stacks, repeating the, the mistake again? Four or five years ago, a new concept or term came onto the scene which changed everything for me. Circular economy. When before it was like, yeah, interesting concept you have here, but how are we supposed to make money on this? Now it was suddenly like, yes, this is exactly how we have to do it. Because now everything is about circular economy. At the Magic Factory, we teamed up with others 
sharing these ideas of a circular economy for food and waste. Our partner had already baptized the biogas facility, the Magic Factory, which not only for the pupils visiting, but also for me, gave the impetus to innovate with nature, because now there was a reason, circular economy. In the greenhouse, together with professional growers, we have scaled up a rewilded tomato system with thousands of earthworms. And in addition to being the ecosystem engineers, distributing nutrients and so on, they are also the top predators of the soil food web. And as with ecosystems in general, top predators tend to reduce pest and disease. Here they feast on microbes and preventing the bad ones from taking over the party. Science literature predicted that we could never grow commercial yields in this way using only waste. But now it seems we are there, the magic of biomimicry. To me, innovation is about copying others, copying ideas and putting, up, putting them together in new ways. I have copied recklessly from space research and first of all from nature. Out there is an infinite textbook of solutions ready to be mimicked, especially for agriculture. I have nothing against engineers, not even the one in my veins. But if we invest one-sidedly one in classic engineering, we are missing something. Allowing for more natural magic works because these solutions have been around for much longer than engineering and they are intrinsically sustainable. Teams of species have evolved and improved their magic of cooperation through millions and millions of years in a continuously dynamic and changing environment. So I think it's time to encourage engineers to let go of some of the control and rather go out there and look for these solutions while they're still there. So let us add unknown biodiversity into our systems, allow for some rewilding, even indoors. Magic will happen, I promise.